Hey, it's Clay. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another video. This is the long-awaited and expected next part of my uh, series where I'm building a 66 Hi-Fi tube amplifier. And uh, my PCB has finally arrived. If you guys have ever seen Toy Story 1, that scene where Sid gets his package in the mail and he's running around yelling, It came! It finally came! You know, that's, that's me right now. I am thrilled that my package has arrived. Unfortunately, uh, with the outbreak of COVID-19, a lot of the manufacturing and delivery stuff from China has um, yeah, experienced a lot of delay and, and certainly um, you know, my, my receiving of my amplifier PCB is much lower priority than in every, the world's health, so I certainly am not complaining for that, but you know, it definitely has impacted uh, the the speed at which this build is progressing forward, but nonetheless, we are here and we are ready to rock and roll. And just to do a little bit of an introductory interview, or I guess kind of review of this board, uh, my first impressions are really good. It looks really solid. Um, it looks very it's it's pretty strong. It's very stable. Um, oh, you know, the layout looks good. Everything looks very very good. My only thought or concern at this point is I got two one little tiny thing first of all there's a my yellow one of my in, inputs here for my power transformer going to my rectifier tube you got silk screen on the back I'm not really sure why that happened I'm guessing it's probably user error when I laid out the PCB I'm guessing I put it on the wrong layer not really sure how or why that happened though and then second I'm actually going to test this right now. I'm a little bit concerned that the leads on my filter capacitors are not going to fit in these holes, which could be a tremendous problem. Okay. Whew. I think it fits, but like just barely. Yeah, it's it's a tight squeeze. So I... I definitely in the future will need to kind of reconsider how I do these filter cap leads. Let's try. Yeah, the, these some of these the holes here are just not super big. So I definitely like the sizing of my components maybe hasn't been completely spot on. So I yeah, just like the sizing of these holes. I think the resistors and the capacitors will be fine. Question mark. I hope so at least. Let's try. Let's try this guy. This is a a big f cement uh, power resistor. And yeah, it fits. Just barely though. Whoo, that's a tight squeeze. Okay, so I think we're gonna be okay. Um, that could have been a catastrophic problem. Let's maybe see about these tube sockets. Yeah, so, okay, I was wondering how this would work, if I was going to be able to mount these directly, and definitely not. So I'm just going to have to run wires to these off-board, which is actually fine. I wasn't exactly, I think you, you probably would need to get tube mount, or PCB mount tube sockets. You know, these little tabs are not going to fit inside these holes. So that's okay, that's not a problem. Um... You know, I'm just going to have to run wires, which is totally fine. And in some ways, it's probably a, even maybe a benefit. So, overall, we're here. It has finally arrived. I'm excited about that. We're going to go ahead and just get started on populating and building this thing. Let's rock and roll.
Alright guys, I ran into a pretty big issue. As you may be able to see, these are my filter caps. And they're not fitting very well on the board. The spacing that I used is way off. It's about half of what I need to be honest. And there's just too much potential here that some of these legs are going to touch. So I think what I'm going to do is it kind of defeats the purpose a little bit of having this on a PCB, but you know what, this is prototype number one. But I think I'm going to take these out and I'm just going to move them onto like a one of these, like a project board that I'm going to have on the side. These will fit fine in here and I'll just run... I'll have this guy mounted on the board on the in the chassis a little bit somewhere else and and we'll just run uh, wires from this second board to the main PCB that's that's just the only way I think I'm going to be able to do it with it making any sense and being at least in some way shape or form stable and functional so uh, yeah prototyping with these capacitors I'm way off pretty much everything is off like all these, whatever I used for these capacitor holes was not accurate or correct. So definitely, that's one of the things about this process is you want to make sure you have your components that you're going to use picked out ahead of time and that they match exactly with what you put on your PCB. I mean, this will work. It's not the end of the world, but like, you know, these coupling caps here, I've got to bend these leads. You know, these guys don't fit, so I've got to bend those. This one is, instead of being too long, is too short because it's, a, I don't know if axial is the word, where the two legs come out the bottom, kind of like this, compared to radial, which are, I think are like this, where the legs come out each end. So, kind of a mess in terms of my capacitors matching and fitting, but it is what it is, and we're going to keep pressing on. All right, I want to check in and do a little status update on where we're at here. Made some pretty good work. I've got my PCB board mostly populated. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, all my resistors went in really without any issue. Um, all my kind of quarter watt, smaller size resistors went in just fine. I did have some resistors that were slightly larger that I had to kind of accommodate for. They don't quite fit in the holes perfectly. Capacitors, on the other hand, are almost a complete fail. Um, almost none of the capacitors fit quite right. And in hindsight, I really just didn't plan that out very well. And I might just need to spend some time building my own size components. But I do believe, uh, I basically just have had to kind of tuck the legs. You know, if they stick out the sides, I tuck them underneath and point them down. And it works for the most part. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but I think it will produce a functioning amp. With my three filter caps, I did have to do a little breakout board, and I've got these mounted here off to the side, which is, you know, not ideal, but also not maybe the biggest problem in the world. Um, you know, fender amps have had capacitors in dog houses for many years, so it is a construction method that can be proven to work. Um, I've also drilled, drilled holes and mounted my two, three tube sockets. I got my 12AU7 my 6v6, my 6v6, so we're good to go there. I did have to run to the hardware store and pick up just some miscellaneous hardware. I think I'm using number six size screws and bolts for these com these mounting holes. For these, I actually needed number four. Uh, the number sixes were too big, and I had to actually go with nylon. So I've got nylon spacers that are holding the board up off of the chassis giving it a little bit of clearance and also the the screws and washers are holding those in. I think that should be a fine. Um, 
but you know, I, in hindsight, maybe would have liked to make those a little bit bigger, so that I would have had a little bit more space. Uh, some of these, th these two here are gonna be fine. This one's gonna be fine. This guy appears a little close to one of my leads, but overall, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, one thing I am th contemplating, I did make this for a tube rectifier, but I may just do solid state, depending on where my B plus is at, and I'm probably going to be using JJ 6V6s, which are a little more accommodating for higher voltage, but, you know, just something that I will be thinking about. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how I've gotten up to this point. Um, I'm almost ready to start kind of getting some of these transformer wires put together. I've got some of these banana plugs. I need, I got two quarter inch jacks. So yeah, we're just gonna keep trucking on. Um, one comment I will make: this the steel is pretty thick stuff, and that's nice from the perspective that it makes a very rigid amp. I mean, this thing doesn't really flex much. If I lift it up, you know, with these heavy transformers bolted on, it works just fine. So I like that, but it also does make it really difficult to work with when you're drilling. So. Little mid build update here so far. I'm pretty pleased with this PCB. I think it's going to work fine. And uh, we're going to keep moving forward.